Welcome to the September 5th, 2021 online worship of Fort Hill United Methodist Church. What does it mean to live in the certainty of uncertainty? I invite us to join together in our call to worship. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth, I will, I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. Our scripture today comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 3, verses 8 through 14. More than that, I regard everything as lost because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, and having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death if somehow I may obtain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As Paul wrote his letter to the Philippians, he was facing the certainty of uncertainty. Faithful to the practice of preaching 
the good news of the crucified and risen Jesus Christ, Paul was suffering the same old news of misfortune and persecution that followed him wherever he went. It's likely that Paul was writing to the Philippians about 10 years after he had first visited them in the mission of proclaiming the gospel of Jesus. It had been 10 years of uncertainty as Paul highlights in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 24 through 28. Five times I have received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I received a stoning. Three times I was shipwrecked. For a night and a day I was adrift at sea. On frequent journeys and danger from rivers, dangers from bandits, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers and sisters, and toil and hardship through many a sleepless night, hungry and thirsty, often without food, cold and naked, and besides other things, I am under daily pressure because, I have, because of my anxiety for all the churches. Ten years of uncertainty, Paul outlined in these few verses. What was it that sustained Paul through these ten years of uncertainty? What was it that allowed him to live in the certainty of uncertainty? Well, Paul shares that answer to this question in the scripture we just read. From Philippians chapter 3, the second half of verse 8 to the first part of verse 9. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain, that I may gain Christ and be found in him. And from Philippians chapter 3, the second half of verse 13 through the 14th verse. Forgetting what lies behind and pressing forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. What sustained Paul through 10 years of uncertainty was faith that God had found him in the uncertainty of this world through the certainty of Jesus Christ. What sustained Paul was the certainty that God had called him to proclaim the gospel of Jesus in the midst of an uncertain world. Life that called him to press on, forgetting what lay behind and pressing on to what was ahead. Morna D. Hooker in the New Interpreter's Bible has these words to share about Paul as he wrote to the Philippians. Paul is spelling out some of the implications of what it means to believe. To believe in the gospel is to put one's trust in God. We need at least four terms in English faith, belief, trust, faithfulness, to convey all the meanings of the Greek noun for faith, pistis. To trust in something or someone means to rely on them, and complete trust suggests that there is no need to rely on anyone else or anything else. I read recently a a, an account in Our Daily Bread by a person identified as Mary O. And it's a story about living with certainty of faith in the midst of uncertainty. I'll share with you what she writes. When you have a child who has been born with challenges, you can rest assured that emotionally, you will have some really bad days. I'm sure that many parents who have a child with a disability will verify that having a sense of hope while maintaining a sense of reality can be a very hard balancing act for sure. As a Christian, my hope for Jeffrey's progress and growth was in the Lord. I believe that the Lord had made me some very precious promises for this child. And I had literally seen the working of God's hands in his life. I was not ignorant of miracles I had my bad days, but I would have to say that most of the time I was expecting God to move and was confident that what he promised he would deliver. That is, except for one day. 
Jeff was about 13 at the time and still struggling in the mornings to get on his feet. His balance was really off this particular morning. It always took time for his eyes to level out. He would have to place his chin on his chest to look ahead. If that wasn't bad enough, he was for some reason as pale as a sheet. He came out of his room, crashing off the sides of the walls, looking like a sheet pale. All the faith I had for this child's healing suddenly crashed to my feet. As I looked at him wobbling toward me, I thought, you're really kidding yourself, Mary Ann. He's never going to grow out of this, be healed, whatever. It's just not ever going to happen. My heart, my spirit just sank. Jeff, by this time, had found his way up to me. He stopped, looked me straight in the face, and said, I will not forget you. Marianne says, I was stunned. You have to understand, Jeff's speech was very immature for his age, and he had a problem with slurring his words. But this statement, which by the way, was straight out of the book of Isaiah, was clear, strong, and said with such authority. I looked at him and said, what did you say, Jeff? He replied, I said, I will not forget you. I asked Jeff, why, why did you say that? He just shrugged his shoulders turned to go to the stairs and said, I don't know. I just felt like I was supposed to say that to you. And off he went. I stood there completely spellbound as my spirit and God rebounded. I knew that it was the Lord speaking me to, to me directly through my son. And I thought to myself, what a wonderful God. It was just unbelievable. Needless to say, I continued the rest of the day filled with an extra dose of faith, extra dose of faith and hope, and gradually understanding that even if I crash and fall from times to time, underneath me are the everlasting arms. And no doubt about it, God was always there to catch me, dust me off, and get me going again. Mary Ann concluded her account with this verse from the 36th Psalm. How precious is thy loving kindness, O God. The children of men take refuge in thy wings. The certainty of uncertainty. Life lived with faith, belief, trust, and faithfulness in Christ. Life that calls you to press on toward the goal of Jesus. May God bless you this day in the certainty of uncertainty. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, amen. Today, we practice the Moravian Love Feast in which we will share together bread and water. We do this because we're not able on an online worship to celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion as it is, a, communi as it is a, a sacrament of the gathered. We will have communion this morning at Fort Hill at our in-person worship at 1030. But today we break bread and we share water together as we remember the certainty of God's faith. We share together bread this day as we remember Jesus, the living bread in our lives. We share together water as we remember Jesus, the living water. May God bless you as you remember and God's love this day in your life through Jesus.
As we gather in prayer, I invite us today to remember our world and all those who face challenge for those who are in the midst of harm's way through wars and rumors of war, for those who are in the midst of harm's way through the COVID virus and other disease, for those who need the message of hope in Jesus, for those who grieve and for those who rejoice. Also, as we gather in prayer, I will let you know of a, a prayer ministry at Fort Hill Church that you can uh, participate in. You can find information about it on our church website. Let us pray. God, we ask for your blessings this day for our world, for those who follow, for those who seek to live with faith in Jesus, for those who press on towards the goal of Christ. We pray, O oh God, for our world and for those who suffer, for those without hope. We pray, O oh God, this day that we might be messengers of your peace and that we might know what it means to live in the certainty of faith in Jesus, even in the uncertainty of this world. For it's in our Savior's name we pray. Amen. God bless you as you live in the certainty of faith in Jesus in the midst of the uncertainty of this world. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Amen.